Double Balloon Endoluminal Intervention Platform with Flexible Grasper Exhibits Clonic Endoscopic Submucosal Dissection. Clonic ESD is challenging for several reasons. One of them is the thin colon wall. As a result of that, there is a limited expandability of the colonic submucosal space. So unlike the esophagus and the stomach that when we inject, we get this very nice uh, submucosal left that allow us to dissect easily, you may not get this uh, expansion in the colon. Also, the colonic muscularis propria it can easily be disrupted with any wrong movement with the knife or simply by applying an extra pressure by the tip of the endoscope or by the cap. In some patients, clonic looping is a problem because it adds to the instability of the position of the scope and make the ESD harder. And also, some lesions are located behind folds or around corner, which can complicate the dissection process. Because of the difficulties during clonic ESDs, traction devices were invented to expedite the procedures by exposing the submucosal space and providing a clear plane for dissection. How can we create that traction? Uh, in the past, people used clip with a line. Uh, people used external grasping forceps or snare alongside the scope, and also the use of double channel endoscope and using this uh, accessory channel uh, for uh, adding a snare or a forceps or rat tooth uh, to grasp the tissue and allow traction. Although all the above uh, examples we mentioned uh, are doing significant tractions, but they are not providing what we are calling dynamic traction. What we mean by dynamic traction? Dynamic traction allows the ability to manipulate the lesion in multiple directions. Uh, for example, you want to move it to the right, to the left, a little bit this way or that way. It also provides adequate and variable tissue tension for dissection. Sometimes you want the tension to be higher or lower. It also allows the regrasping of the lesion from another edge to change the direction of the tension. In this video, we describe a double balloon endoluminal intervention platform with a flexible grasper, which allows the stabilization of the colon, creating a therapeutic zone for the performance of ESD, and provides dynamic traction with the use of flexible grasper alongside the endoscope. Our patient described in this case was 72 years old, who was referred for endoscopic submucosal dissection of 6 cm tubular adenomatous polyp in the sigmoid colon. And given the size of the lesion and the possibility of early adenocarcinoma, we have elected to do ESD. In this video, we demonstrate the usefulness of this novel technique in the removal of 6 cm polyp in the sigmoid colon. After advancing the colonoscope along the device to the side of the lesion, the fourth balloon of the device was advanced to the oral side of the lesion to create the therapeutic zone. The polyp was then examined carefully and it showed tubular pattern with mild irregularities but no sign of deep invasion such as loss of vascularity or distorted pit pattern. After careful examination of the lesion, the lesion's margin were marked using dual knife J with soft coagulation current effect 550 watt. The lesion margin were then lifted using a submucosal injection agent of a compound solution composed of 500 cc of hispan, 1 cc of epinephrine, and 3 cc of methylene blue. It's important to ensure that all the margins of the lesion are raised uniformly to avoid forming valleys in between the injectates. We we'll prefer the technique of injecting all the lesion margins at once to expedite the circumferential incision after that. We utilize dual knife to perform the circumferential incision around the lesion. We're using endocut Q mode and we're ensuring careful separation of the lesion's margin from the surrounding mucosa by repeated dissection of the submucosal plane with swift coagulation mode and we use effect 3, 35 watt. After adequate separation of the anal side of the lesion from the surrounding mucosa, the flexible grasper was introduced under direct visualization 
and maneuver to create a traction separating the lesion from the underlying muscle layer. As you can see here, the flexible grasper allowed us to utilize the dual knife far away from the lesion, which can increase the knife maneuverability and also allowed us to utilize the traction of the flexible grasper effectively. In occasions when the endoscopist prefer to have a closer look at the submucosal plane, the device allows the scope to advance under the grasper to provide closer look with micro movement, particularly to dissect fiber closer to the edge of the lesion. Repeated submucosal injection is now performed to allow easier submucosal dissection under traction. As you can see here, the flexible grasper was constantly maneuvered to provide the adequate tension needed to maintain the traction. Repeated submucosal dissection is now performed carefully and slowly to avoid any deep injury to the muscle layer under the lesion. After dissecting the majority of the lesion, the forepalone is now retracted to allow submucosal injection of the other side of the lesion. After that, the flexible grasper was reoriented to grasp the edge of the lesion to allow the final dissection. As we can see here, we have a very limited submucosal space, but we still are able to provide adequate tension to maintain the traction needed to perform the final cut of the lesion. Post mucosectomy site was carefully inspected and it showed no perforation. The site of the dissection was closed completely using endoscopic suturing device. The procedure was performed in 70 minutes. Pathology showed well differentiated adenocarcinoma with depth of invasion into superficial submucosa of 198 uh, micromillimeter. Uh, peripheral and deep margin were clear. No lymphovascular or perineural invasion was seen. So this was a curative resection. I would like also to highlight here the depth of submucosa, which was dissected in this case, was 1,104 micromillimeter. So in conclusion, double balloon endoluminal interventional platform with flexible grasper provided a reliable dynamic traction which significantly expedited clonic ESD in this case.